On this episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, we have cities. Again. We also have Ant-Men. Airplay on Sonos. Is that a thing? Because I heard that's a thing. It's a thing. Elon Musk might be a supervillain? Or a superhero. Speaking of superheroes, we have Richard Gunther with us tonight. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 180 for Thursday the 12th of July 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, we don't matter. Richard, how you doing this week, buddy? I am so excited to be here. I had such a great week last week and I can't wait to tell you about it. That's why I'm here. Oh, uh, you're so you're here to go ahead and ruin this week by being on this show because you had such a good week <laughs> last week and you want to balance things out. It's good of no, you no, to no, be no, mindful. No, no, no. I want to share the goodness. I'm sharing the goodness. Well, I can't wait to hear about that. Yeah. Um, Amos, dude, how's your week been? Busy-ish, kind of? Yeah. Like, Normal, uh, there's, there's right? been nothing going on at work because it's July in Alaska and everybody's fishing because fishing's the mission in July in Alaska. Um, uh, however, at home, I've been pretty busy. Uh, Amber helped me set up a home photo studio that we're, we've got going on. Hello, Amber. Hi. There, that's that might be all we get ah, from her. The, the invisible daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Um, so we've been setting that up, taking some pictures, and it's awesome. It's, it's. I don't know, can't, you know me, I'm always the guy carrying around the big camera for no damn reason, taking right. pictures that I never share with anybody. Well, it's time I cure that sharing part and actually start sharing this stuff out and, uh, and start uh, uh, taking my photography seriously. So we, we set up a home studio, and it's awesome. Amazing, dude. I can't wait to see your work from, from that. Um, yeah, we've had a lot of really crappy weather here. Typically in New Mexico in the summer, it's 100 degrees and super duper hot. Now it's like in the mid 60s and raining every day. That's that's our weather. Yeah. So <laughs> what? Yeah. It's just it's really odd. But normally I spend a lot of time outdoors. I like the heat, you know. So I'm usually outside grilling or or you know doing yard work or something like that. But because the weather has been so crappy. I've been driven indoors, and I do something I almost never do. I played video games. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely but, uh, need more of that in your life. Uh, yeah. In, in so, a game in particular. Yes. Yeah, so thanks to a certain individual getting me Cities Skylines for my birthday. Thank you, Amos. Uh, I've put several hours into that, and it's pretty cool, man. It is addictive as hell and yeah. i rediscovered that i suck at running a city yeah i was gonna say how it, uh have you have you reestablished the fact that you're not a good mayor <laughs> didn't you yeah, just turns, talk about this <laughs> it turns out it turns out that cities need a lot of power to run <laughs> <laughs> my, my first city that i built with city skylines i actually forgot to plumb so we, oh. uh, they they, ha they oh. had they had they had they had hearses, they had trash trucks, they had fire trucks and police car and 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 mass transit and everything else, but there was no water, so it was just the well, sewage. I, well, I like bet the hearses came in handy. Yeah, they did. Wow, <laughs> Richard, uh, Richard, are you are, are, are you, you much a of good a mayor? Exactly. No, you know the only sim game that I ever played was wow back on like an old. 386 computer i think and it was sim office and basically you had to build and manage a building i kind of i imagine not unlike what the person in the white house used to do for a living mm. so i used to play that occasionally and it was kind of fun i liked it and the best part of it was that the the um sound effect that they played throughout the whole thing. Cause when the office was full, there was all this like background chatter. You heard just like people talking and people talking in an office and all this background noise of the Merlin telephone ring. Do you mm. remember those? Um, the AT&T Merlin phones, which are the, the black phones with the angular headset. And they made this very distinct telephone ringing sound a lot of government offices had them. I don't know if you ever did. Ah, uh, yes. I I think I know what you're referring to. I I don't know that I ever called them Merlins, but I I 
Yeah, I am familiar with that that old school standard office phone. I am familiar with it. However, I must admit that the the memory of that tone is uh, uh, combined with the memory of the twenty four ringtone. So, uh, oh, the the Motorola. They might be the same. It, it's it probably. They, it, oh it, no, they're not. No, not Motorola because this is pre. This is pre yeah. Motorola. All right, I'm gonna play Leo Laporte, and I'll find something on the internet to play in the background while you keep talking. <laughs> 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 oh man, uh, I think that's what a lot of our audience does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, dude. Uh, so I, I I gotta say, have you ever heard of Agritsuko? Um, I, I believe you're referring to the Netflix anime series right uh i've heard a lot about it from bryce castillo yeah i have not myself watched it oh my gosh oh okay so there are exactly three properties in anime that i am willing to watch one is sword art online which i haven't fully seen so i can't say that it's awesome i just say that i'm willing to watch it the uh, other is um the uh, avatar the last airbender uh, and I'm assuming um, the 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 sequel to that. I can't. Uh, oh shoot! The Legend of Korra. Yeah, Legend of Korra. I'm assuming that's the same way. I'm willing to watch it. It's 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 not the the artistic style and the the drama in it isn't. Um, it, it doesn't take me away from the story, so I'm willing to watch it, and it, I find it enjoyable. Uh, Agasuko is amazing. It is absolutely the best of all the things that I like about anime amplified to 11 and shoved right down your throat it is so fun <laughs> it is so fu- these are like 10 10 minute episodes it just it, it oh it's so oh, is awesome. that it it's so awesome oh i didn't realize it was that short of a series i might actually check yeah. it out this and week. netflix just renewed it for a second season coming out next year it's stupid good it's so fun me and the ki- i actually caught on to it because sterling was watching it for like the fourth time and i was like what are you watching and yeah. it is it's good. I had Amber I'm, watch it today. Amber, what did you think about it? Yeah. Mm. It was all right. <laughs> <laughs> there Strong you go. Opinions from there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the enthusiasm. <laughs> oh, oh what about you, Richard? Do you do you like anime? You know, I never really got into that. I don't know what it is about it. I know that people who are into it are really into it. We have a house guest, a friend of ours who's staying with us now and living in our guest room for a little while while he kind of gets established in the area and he's really big into it and he's he's one of the youngins who watches everything on his phone just walking around the house with this on his (laughs) phone i put i'm not kidding i put a 55 inch plasma television in his room he watches tv on his phone Uh, yeah, it sounds like my son. <laughs> so it sounds like, yeah, yeah, that sounds familiar. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you, you know, you can just watch on the big screen. Yeah, but I can touch this one and it act, it, it, it's so much faster. <laughs> like, right. oh my gosh. Oh, geez. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to compel both of you to watch Agaritsuko. It's on Netflix. It's free and it's fun. It doesn't take up more than an hour, hour and a half of your time. And you, if you don't enjoy it, then I'll buy you a beer. Oh, okay. Well, right. I'm, I'm guessing that I'll enjoy it, but I'm going to lie to you so I get that free beer. Well, I'll probably buy you a beer anyway, so whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it goes. You know, after watching 10 episodes of that, you probably need one. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's you, you do. You do. You need, definitely need a beer after watching it because holy crap. Richard, you are a connected home kind of person, and I bet that you're into Sonos systems. I am. I am. And this week there was what I thought was some fairly big news where Sonos now supports AirPlay. And anybody who has Sonos speakers has been probably wanting, if they're not an Android person, has been probably wanting the ability to AirPlay stuff to Sonos speakers. Mm. Sonos speakers cost a lot of money. They and do. you would think that for what they'd cost, you'd be able to do this. But they never offered this ability until literally today. Mm. And when they turned it on, I was so excited about it. I went out and bought another new Sonos <laughs> speaker. <laughs> yes. Now, did you well, do that before you tested out AirPlay <laughs> on them? No, I, I, I didn't. So actually, now that I think about it, it wasn't really today. It was yesterday that this first 
was available. And I tried it out. I liked it. I thought they did a really good job with it. And so today I just, I don't know what it was. I got this itch that I needed to be able to do this in my office too, because I didn't have one of the compatible Sonos speakers because it doesn't work with all Sonos speakers. You Mm. have to have one of the more recent generation speakers starting. I think the oldest one that they support is the second generation play five, which is the big monster that sounds amazing. Can, can I just go on record saying that, hey, if you have to figure out, uh, well, which which model do you have? We've got the Play 5. Which generation? Oh, you've already gone too deep for most people that I know. That, <laughs> well, you know, right. And so that's, that's, that's part irritating. of the problem. And, and, and I think that they're going to get a lot of pushback from people who are like, look, I've been, I have spent thousands of dollars on multiple devices across my home. And you're telling me that none of them or only some of them are compatible. That's kind of crap. I don't know what the limitation is. I wonder if it's technology or, or if it's marketing, because if it's marketing, it worked. I went out and bought a new speaker (laughs) today. Well, I mean, but you had all that money saved up for the 2015 MacBook pro that they're not selling anymore. So I can see why you went ahead and bought the speaker. (laughs) You know, the the last great MacBook pro. Um, the same day they announced that there are new, more powerful MacBook Pros. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I, I that's something I don't need. Right I, now. I will say that I fully agree with Tom Merritt when he said, that I'm just glad they did they did it right this time. They just released it. They didn't have a press conference. They didn't drag everybody out. They didn't yep. do any. They just, oh, yeah, by the way, the site's updated. Here's some new stuff, and the old stuff's gone. Yeah. Yep. yeah. No, it, it, it's a smart way of doing things. And they have nice. You know, they're nice machines. If you're a developer, these are nice machines. These are much needed updates. This platform hadn't been updated for like three years, which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But they still didn't update the the butterfly keys, but I never had a problem with them. So I I guess I shouldn't talk. Hey, here's that ringtone real quick. Here's the ringtone. Ah, yeah. You know that. You totally know that. That was, in fact, the in-office phone signal that they had or phone tone that they had mm. in 24 um yeah ah yeah because i actually had the 24 ringtone the, the, the motorola the whichever one it was i can't remember now it's, it's all conflagrated in my mind um as my ring my actual phone ringtone for like years so yeah. i watched a movie this week i continued the trend of every weekend for like the last month and a half seeing a new movie <laughs> uh, now, now you, you said watched do you mean watched or saw those I, words I did both. imply different uh, modes, right? Um, I actively watched this film in a movie theater. Okay. Watched it play right. on the screen. You didn't, but watching implies, I don't know why, but when, when people say they watched a movie, it implies that they were home. Hmm. And I didn't think you were that kind of guy that would, you know, acquire by no, some well, my, inappropriate once a, means that once that upon like a, a time, movie. yeah, back in the once day, once upon a time before streaming services were ready, uh, readily available, <laughs> I may or may not have uh, gotten but, a movie. Or and two. now, and I would have gone now, totally different because if you say you watched a movie to me, okay, you 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 were engaged in the movie and you viewed the movie, you, like you watched the whole thing, you you saw the movie uh, from beginning to end. Whereas if you just say I saw a movie. The first thing I always think of is, yeah, I see movies all the time. They're at the theater, like then they're they're on the shelves. And like I saw a movie the other day; it was on the shelf. Uh, I didn't watch oh, it. No. it. I saw it, and it just—I okay. I don't know. It's t- see, English is hard. Interesting. English is hard. <laughs> that's, English yeah, is hard. Is... I, I blame the local dialects. Yeah, that's. I don't know. That, yeah. I've never really contemplated see versus watch. Uh, anyway, anyway so I interrupted I... you. What movie? <laughs> I watched Ant-Man and the Wasp in my local movie theater. Um, it's, you know, of course, the latest and greatest in the MCU. Is it, it's though? It's good. I mean, well, so, I don't so, know if it's the greatest. It's definitely the latest. <laughs> uh, it was fine. It was good. I enjoyed it. It's yeah. a fun ride. If if you liked the first Ant-Man movie, I say this, you will probably like this one, too. Mm-hmm. It was not mind-blowing, but it wasn't really disappointing either. Uh, Brian Brushwood apparently was disappointed because Mm. he went in with some weird uh, preconceived notions, I guess, and he was wrong. Brian's always disappointed. Yeah, he does seem to be that way. 
but no, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, uh, too bad we don't have that movie in the movie draft, though. <laughs> uh, that would be nice. However, that's just not how things work around here. Um, and I'm stalling because I forgot to queue it up. There it is. <laughs> so let's do this now. Welcome to your BT Movie Draft Minute presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of July 9th, 2018. I'm your host, Big Boys J. Email in, the Movie Draft Minute is everything plus bite-sized baskets of Chinese cuisine. Apparently, I'm all that and dim sum. Let's go to the scoreboard. Ant-Man and the Wasp and the First Purge got the weekend started, putting Team Walking Drunk in last place with $211.8 million. Team Ritual Misery is in fifth place with $379.8 million. Team Game Night is in fourth place with $452.1 million. Team The Bodge Squad is in third place with $512.1 million. Team Have a Drink maintains second place with $754.6 million. And continuing to ride the Incredibles 2 wave to first place, it's Team Movie Party with $935.1 million. That's your Movie Draft Minute. All totals are accurate as of July 11, 2018. Uh, All right, what I need our audience to do <laughs> is this weekend go see Hotel Transylvania 3 mm. and um, then go watch it again and again and again mm. and again because we need to make about $600 million <laughs> off of that movie. Yeah, I think your audience alone is going to be able to change that. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to say, I, I I would never thought the Incredibles 2 would have the steam that it has for as long as it's had it. It's creeping. Really? It's literally creeping up on Avengers money right now. Like, it's it's only yes. 100, Come on. it's $150 million on. It's off of Pixar. Avengers. Pixar. Yes. Pixar summer blockbusters always win. Mm. Always. Yeah. But not $600 million, not a half a billion dollars. Like, this is, this is nuts. Uh, what, I knew it was going to have legs, but my God. God, this what, thing what has... I'm hearing is Richard wants to join the BT movie draft next year so he can prove us wrong. That's what I'm hearing because he's, right. he's, I will totally. He's, I'm up for that. He's over there talking smack right now. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I am. Up no, for absolutely. That. Or maybe we'll just hire him on as a, as a background consultant. He can help us win next year because we're clearly <laughs> right. not going to win this year. <laughs> yeah, he, he can take my spot. Uh, I, there yeah, you go. We did. We didn't do so well. Uh, this is a... We need Hotel Transylvania three to re bring in about two hundred million dollars, and we need um. Uh, what's the other Mission one? Impossible. Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible. To, to bring in another four or five million dollars. Four <laughs> well, or five million, okay, so hundred million. I don't know about Mission Impossible. I think it'll do well. I don't know that it'll do that well. I think Hotel Transylvania will bring in that kind of money. I don't know if it'll do it in time. I I don't know that it's because I didn't expect when we bought it, we didn't expect Incredibles 2 to have the legs that it has. And if people are still going to the theater to watch Incredibles 2, that's going to eat into that Hotel Transylvania market. Just the people that went yeah. to Incredibles 2 last weekend aren't going to go to Hotel Transylvania next weekend. Like, I would. <laughs> but you didn't go to Incredibles 2 last weekend. Well, yeah, I guess, but I think I she proves you your point. I, I, I mean, I, I think true. that there is an audience for both. And I, yeah. I think there's interest in both. And they, you know, both of them have a big following. Mm. Your Incredibles 2 thing has, it has Pixar going for it. It has the the fact that Incredibles was probably one of the best Pixar movies that yeah. they've ever made. An 11 year so drought was, between them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think Hotel Transylvania, it also has a great following. It's a good studio. They consistently put out good stuff. You have a chance. You have a chance. I'm not so sure about the next version of Mission Impossible getting the kind of money you needed to. I think that's more like a 300. Well, me and Cam were thinking about that, but when we bought Mission Impossible, like I, we looked at the trends and every movie has made like $50 million more than the movie previous. It, hmm. Yeah. It, and as, also as much as we think they're going downhill, they're actually gaining in the, in the box offices every time they release one. So, yeah. And also uh, we, that was the first movie drafted mm -hmm. and uh, I, we overspent. We did on that that we could have gotten at least one more movie i think if we had been a little more conservative with that purchase yeah but anyway uh that's uh that's the movie draft we're gonna lose and better luck next year <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh all right so I, I hinted at this in the um in the run-up to the show is elon musk possibly a supervillain? 
I think Amos, you and you, Richard, are going to help us answer this question. Oh. I've got a game for you guys, and it's called Evil or Elon. Do we have a bumper? Oh, wow. We don't have a bumper for this because we I need... made it about 20 minutes before we went live. Well, well okay, so, so I'm, you... I'm, I'm going to tell the audience right now. Okay, uh, if you are watching this, you're listening to this, if we are pumping into your ear holes right now, we need a general Kent's game bumper. Just a general bumper that ah. Kent can just bring on us whenever he comes That's up with one idea. of these random games. Uh, That's a good nothing idea. Nothing specific, just, just Kent's bumper, whatever. In fact, if it said random game, if it, if it said Kent's bumper, whatever, that'd be even that's like that's extra points if you want to do that. <laughs> no, that would be that would be amazing. That would be awesome. Uh, Richard, pick a number between one and 100, please. All right. I'm going to go with 73. 73. Unfortunately, my number was six and that's an even number. So, Amos, you're going to start. Oh, oh, I am going to read a quote and you are going to tell me if it was Elon Musk who said it. Or a supervillain. I said it. I like where this is going. If you want to produce this show on the background and be our own Bryce, you can do that. I don't know how you would, how you'd pull it. Maybe maybe <laughs> maybe me and Richard can be, be ritual misery, and you can be our Bryce. Um, right. And- <laughs> hey, that's um, yeah, that might be worth a try. Um. <laughs> okay, right, so Amos. was it is it an Elon Musk uh, quote, or is it an actual like supervillain from a TV or 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 movie or a cartoon? Or- Am I getting that right? Or book? Yeah, it could be it could be TV, movie, comic book, cartoon. Um, it's just a supervillain of some sort. Okay. Or it was Elon Musk, like okay. the real SpaceX Elon Musk. Guy. Gotcha. Okay. All right, the guy <laughs> who made everything else we're going to talk about in this episode possible for me. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I wonder if it's coincidence. Let's go for it. Let's do it. Elon well Musk. timed. <laughs> All right, Amos. Who said this? When something is important enough. You do it even if the odds are not in your favor. I'm going to go with Elon Musk on that one. It is, in fact, Elon Musk who said that. Yep. Where's my ding? Um, ding. You jerk. It's in your <laughs> head. R- robbing me of my pleasure. <laughs> Richard, who said this? Sometimes the only way to stay sane is to go a little crazy. That would be an evil supervillain. Ding, ding, ding. That was Harley Quinn's quote. <laughs> Amber had, uh, had had called that on Joker, so she's not too far off. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, you know what? So what, what I'm going to do, if, if it was a supervillain quote, I'm going to ask Amber to name the supervillain. Oh, no. Ooh. Okay. Mm. So All right. I'll, I'll put a yeah, I'll put a score column for her over here. I'm going to go ahead in game modifications. Give, you are our Bryce Castillo. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to give Amber the freebie on this one because I just came up with this rule. So she so the score is actually tied one to one to one. Ugh. Awesome. All right, Amos, back to you. Patience is a virtue, and I'm learning patience. It's a tough lesson. I'm going to go with Elon Musk again. Ding, ding, ding. Specifically speaking of SpaceX. We have we have a perfect score so far. Uh, good job, yes. team. Yeah, with me in the uh, lead. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> For now. All right, Richard. you've had one more question than me so far. That's not a fair way of... I didn't say fair. I said things. perfect. <laughs> 100% across the board. 100% is 100% is 100%. All right, Richard. Some people don't like change, but you need to embrace change if the alternative is disaster. Is that Elon I'm, Musk or a super... Yeah, I'm going to say Elon Musk on that one. Correct. Perfect score remains. Yay! Amos, Amos, back to you. You don't always need a plan. Sometimes you just need to breathe, trust, let go, and see what happens. Is that Elon Musk or a supervillain? Hmm. You don't always need a plan. Sometimes you just need to breathe, trust, mm-hmm. let go, and see what happens. That's a tough one. Uh, I'm gonna it, go. I'm gonna go. Uh, supervillain. It is indeed a supervillain. Amber, Yay! 
Amber, who do you think said that? Yeah, you I don't have... always need a plan. Sometimes you just need to breathe, trust, let go, and see what happens. I don't know, but it sounds like something from like Disney or something. So just take that, roll with it. She says. She says. She <laughs> okay. says the evil villain on that one is Walt Disney. No, Walt Disney. Walt Disney did not say that, but it close. It was the Joker. <laughs> I hate you. Oh, I hate you. Oh. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Richard, the next quote for you is if the world were perfect, it wouldn't be. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of those recursive logic things that like, you have to think about more than once to really, really wrap your head around. Sounds like there's some, something they throw at you in English class. Mm. That is. That this is the kind of thing that you you discuss at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> in a dorm room over beer. This is this would be uh th this is one of uh, Jerry's high thoughts right here. That's what that that's is. exactly mm. what I was thinking too. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right, so I if am going to say yeah. If the world was perfect, it wouldn't be. Is that yeah, what you said? If the world if the world were perfect, it wouldn't be. Oh, if the world. Look at, look at him checking the grammar to make sure that there's no uh, there's no grammar mistakes, no grammar hints. On. Well, so actually, that is a grammar hint. Yeah, I'm going to go with a grammar hint. I'm I'm going to because that would suggest that um, if it were if the world were perfect, yeah. All right, I am going to say that that is Elon Musk. Incorrect. Ooh. Oh. That is a supervillain. Amber, care to take a guess? Is it the Joker again? <laughs> it is not the Joker this time. <laughs> I mean, you can't uh, blame it, a girl for trying. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. it is a character from the DC universe, though. This supervillain was Bizarro. Mm. Ah, so, okay. So uh, a character known for saying things that uh, are kind of off and making you think at 3 a.m., Hmm. Oh, yeah. Bizarre. All right, Amos. The next quote is, life is too short for long-term grudges. Life is too short for long-term grudges. Is that Elon Musk or a supervillain? I recognize this. Like I I, 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 I either read this on Twitter or I heard it on TV while I was reading Twitter. Like it's anchored in Twitter to me. Okay. <clears throat> Would you like me to do an Elon Musk impression or a supervillain impression? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I've got to hear your Elon Musk impression. That is <laughs> exactly. That's what I was going to say. We need to hear you do an Elon Musk impression. All right. All right. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna attempt my best Elon Musk. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Um, uh, li li uh, life is, is too short um, for long-term grudges. Actually, okay, so the voice wasn't there, <laughs> but the mannerisms, you nailed it. Like, that was that was not too bad. Yeah, was, you kind of did. You kind of <laughs> did. Yeah, I, I approve. Uh, diff different voice actor, same, uh, same, same voice actor. Yeah, it, same it's, it's been a while since I've heard his actual voice, but I definitely remember his stage presence and how he wasn't a very, um, a very confident speaker. Yeah. Even well, you, you could tell he's confident in what he's saying, but he's not confident in actually speaking in front of people. That right. was that's a, that's actually a really good way of putting it. Like he knows his stuff, but like he feels it, he presents as if he's uncomfortable doing it. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, the first time Kent and I talked about Elon Musk on this podcast, I mentioned that he was like the smartest blubbering idiot that I'd ever seen. <laughs> Like, oh, like he know, oh. he knows exactly what he's saying, but man, his presentation just kills it for me. Like, oh, <laughs> but but the, but if you if you take if you go aside from that, you see this this raw childlike fascination with everything he says, right? Even though he already knows what he's gonna say, it's amazing. He's one of my favorite right. people, he, even though he might he be is, a villain. Yeah, he is. He is fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, uh, whose turn is I it? Like you're I feel like you're stalling, it's Amos. My, uh, <laughs> oh, Amos, you haven't answered yet. <laughs> yeah, you have not answered yet. Is you're this right. Elon Musk or a supervillain? And you cannot say both. 
Oh, no, I can. It just won't be right. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Supervillain. Incorrect. Ah, that, damn in fact, it. was Elon Musk. It was his tweet. <sighs> All right, Richard, the next quote for you is, I take the position that I'm always to some degree wrong, and the aspiration is to be less wrong. Wow. I take the position you, that I'm always to some degree wrong, and the aspiration is to be good job, wrong. Kent. You did a really good job. This is, yeah, this is, uh, y- your game is far more intelligent than you are. That's the problem with this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am going to say Elon Musk. It is, in fact, mm-hmm. Elon Musk. All good right. Job. Amos, right. back to you. Mm-hmm. If you have a gun, you can rob a bank. But if you have a bank, you can rob anyone. Oh, that totally sounds like a Joker quote. I so want that to be Elon Musk. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, but it's got to be a supervillain. You're going with supervillain. I am. That is correct. Care to take a guess, Amber? I do not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is another uh, DC villain, uh, mm-hmm. kind of more one of the more obscure ones, named Black Mask. Uh, so you're reaching oh. now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's a here. great. That's a great quote, though. I I love that. Yeah. All right, Richard. The final question is for you. Wait, 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 wait. Score recap here. Score recap. All right. Score recap. Amos currently has four points, uh-huh, which uh-huh. actually turns out to be his final score. Uh huh. Uh huh. Amber has one point, Woo! and Richard is sitting at three points, meaning that he needs to get this correct to tie. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, Richard, who said this, Elon Musk or a supervillain? The first step is to establish that something is possible, then probability will occur. The first step is to establish that something is possible, then probability will occur. I'm going to say supervillain. Oh, and you would be incorrect. Oh! That, in fact, was an Elon Musk quote. Amos is the winner this time, uh, but I think we are all winners in finding out that Elon Musk is a supervillain. No, uh, I, I don't know that that's the conclusion that we draw from <laughs> <laughs> Really good, good selection I, of quotes there. That I, was great. The the lesson I took from this this whole game that you you had here was that at least Amber got more points than Kent. Yeah. Oh, good point. I forgot to I forgot to like make up some fake a way for me to make points. Um, dang it! I'll have to I'll have to include that in the next game. All right. Uh, speaking um, of Elon Musk and the 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 chaos and majesty and magic that he he has found a way to create around him. Uh, Richard, you, you actually had a, a personal tie this week, which is why we wouldn't have you on this week because awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I had an unbelievable opportunity about two weeks ago from when we're recording this to go and experience the most recent launch of a SpaceX resupply mission. Now, if you don't already know, SpaceX has the contract with NASA to resupply the space station using their Dragon rockets. And actually, the I, I always get this wrong. There, there's there, the, the name of what's what. But they have a rocket, and then they have a spaceship that rides on top of this rocket and they fill the spaceship with stuff and they send it up in the rocket and it goes to the space station. And they've done this 15 times now. Yeah. There Mm -hmm. have been 15 resupply missions that they have supported. I think one of them uh, failed if I remember correctly. And this is the same program where you see, that occasionally they land the rockets that go and send this thing off into space. So, mm-hmm. and and I don't know if you saw the 
the heavy rocket mm. that they sent off a couple, like, I guess it was like two months ago. It was amazing. It was but so they landed cool. both of the booster rockets simultaneously in unison yep. next mm. to each other. It was just beautiful. It was yeah. unbelievable. Yep. It, it, it's, it's so fast. It's like something straight out of like 1950s science fiction. Yeah. Like it looks mm -hmm. so fake. Like it's so beautiful and majestic and just technologically perfect. How can it be real? Yes. Yeah. Which, right. which I thought was great. A great, great dichotomy on that one because they landed those, the two booster rockets almost like simultaneously right in the same shot. And they're, they're both leaning in going against it and everything else comes down and they lost yep. the main rocket <laughs> during, yeah. during landing. Well, <laughs> and so it's like that's this. the first time that they've tried to land one of those rockets and they tried to land it on the barge mm -hmm. and and you know they've been really clear about this from the beginning landing on the barge much harder mm -hmm. and the first couple yep. times they tried to land on the barge they failed and he's always he elon musk has always looked at that as we learn about mm -hmm. what failed and how to correct it so mm -hmm. we didn't expect it to work the first time so hopefully They'll figure that out and they'll be able to get those made rockets. So from one of these pictures, you can see that it's actually the Falcon. Falcon 9. 9 is the name mm -hmm. of the big rocket that it goes up on. And the spaceship is the Dragon. The spaceship is what carries the cargo to the ISS. Mm -hmm. And the Dragon, what's really cool about that is that that is a multi-purpose ship. That's actually designed not only to carry stuff, but at some point in time, they expect that they're also going to carry people right. in that ship. And yep. they don't have a contract to do that for NASA yet, but that is their goal. So mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about why I was there and how this all happened. NASA has a program through their social media group called NASA Social. And NASA Social is – the organization that promotes all of the stuff that NASA is doing on their social channels. What they also do is they periodically invite people to come and experience the launch of whatever, whatever it happens to be. And they put a call out to social media channels saying, Hey, if you're interested in doing this, let us know. And we may select you to come and see this. Uh, Amber, I have you been need trying. Get, you need to get on the on the NASA Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys, like, you guys. Seriously, if you like, yeah. you guys are space buffs, and if you're into this, there's no reason why you can do this. Now there are hurdles here, right? Like, uh -huh. <clears throat> first of all, you got to pay your own way. Mm. They that was my next question. Entry and the access. But you have to pay your, for you to get there, and you have to pay for lodging. They don't put you up anywhere. And, you know, basically, you have to even pay for your lunch while you're there during <laughs> the event. But they give you access to all this stuff that you would otherwise just not have. Remember, they're a government agency. They don't – they can't be spending money for random people in our citizenry to come and – stay there and, and uh, tweet about it. That's, that's not what their budget is for. <laughs> yeah. But, no, this is, this is pretty great. I, I need to know yeah. like how, like how to get hooked up. Like what's all the places. Is this just the normal, like at NASA on Twitter or is there a no, special so, channel? Yeah. So they have, a, they have an account of their own, both on actually everywhere on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and it's NASA social. So if okay. you're interested in finding out about these events, follow NASA Social. Most recently, they were trying to find people in the uh, upper the the uh, uh, northwest region because there was something that was going to be launching from there. Mm. So it's not all out of Florida. It's kind of all over the place, depending on what they're doing. And mm -hmm. when I applied, like I said, I've been trying to do this for a couple of years now. And this was the first time I was selected. Over 500 people applied for this and they selected 40. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why they selected me. 
I may have a thousand followers aggregated across my accounts, right? Mm. Like in mm. my mind, I'm just like a small guy, but the, the breadth and, and variance of people that they selected was phenomenal. There was a woman there who's a romance novelist. There was a guy there who works at Microsoft. There was someone there who was a best-selling, uh, a, a New York Times best-selling author. I mean, the I, the, I the think Richard, I think they have they, is phenomenal. They they were probably very selective, and I bet for this mission they needed someone who angry tweets about user interfaces. <laughs> That's probably it. And you know what? They found their guy in me. <laughs> they totally did. Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I feel really privileged to have experienced this. And I, I think other people, you know, I, I mentioned the types of people that I met there just because it was fascinating how how different and how broad the categories of people were. And we didn't just get to see the launch. They gave us the VIP treatment. I, one of the other things I sent you, and I, I would ask that you not necessarily share this uh, on on the video, but one of the things that they sent me was like an hour by hour itinerary. It's not even it's like half hour by half hour itinerary mm. of everything that we were going to do while we were there. We got to do things like seeing a live NASA TV broadcast of the briefing about the. Uh, about, about the launch. And then we're in the press gallery to ask questions on the live TV broadcast. Mm. We got to uh, see and tour the vehicle assembly building. This is that big, massive monster of an iconic building that you see mm. on the skyline when you look across the causeway at the Cape. Yep, there on the far left and, and right there. Yep, that's the inside of it. This is where when they would put the solid rocket boosters and the main tank on the shuttle, they literally hung the shuttle from its nose <laughs> right. in this bay. It's that big. It is unbelievable how large this facility is. And we had an opportunity to walk through this and take pictures and find out about the stuff that they're doing in there. It was so, so cool. We also got a chance to go out to the launch pads. We were supposed to be able to actually walk on one of the original Apollo launch pads. But when oh, we man. were there, there was a lightning warning. And <laughs> oh, when there's lightning, they have a loudspeaker system through the entire base where they basically announce what level of lightning warning it is and whether you're allowed to be outside or not. Yep. And when yeah. that was hit, when we were there, we were not allowed to be outside. Yeah. Well, our, our fellow uh, Air Force flight line uh, uh, troops, uh, we were very familiar with the lightning warning. Yeah. Oh, lightning yep. warning. Attention oh, all please. radios, these nets. Attention all radios, these nets. This is mock with a lightning within <laughs> five. Uh, no, yeah. can't you got it wrong? See, this is where you never worked mock, so you got it wrong. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Tension, well. tension on raises nets. <laughs> tension on raises nets. This is mock with the weather warning. We have a uh, lightning within five nautical miles of Dias Air Force Base. Uh, please make sure all vehicles and personnel are secure. Uh, yeah. So there you go. There, that's that's how that flows. Right. Not, not that I've <laughs> it said it a couple like hundred that. times in Texas. Uh, not, not at all. Right. Yeah. It we get something quite like that. Yeah. 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 Um, it, we also got a chance to see indoor facilities. We got to see some of the labs where. You know, they're, we hear about how they're planning on going to bars. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. I love that. I don't did, think did you get to meet in, Did you get to meet any of the aliens, like any of the like original no. uh, Martian citizens that, that I'm sure no. are advisors it, for NASA? That, no, no. <laughs> but, you know, I don't think people <laughs> understand how seriously they're taking this. Like, we saw a lab where they're working on figuring out how to take the regolith, the, the surface soil, if you will, that's on Mars, 
and basically 3D print that substance into structures so that they don't have to take building materials with them. Mm. That they'd actually mm. be able to instead take a massive 3D printer arm with them that would be able to build structures out of the the the, the stuff that's already there. No. Combined right. with yeah. polymers from the waste from the crew that went there. So uh, fascinating. We also saw, and this is what you're showing right now, we also saw their lab where they are experimenting with the effects of radiation on different types of plants and the ability to grow plants in space, either in weightlessness or in the effects of radiation or in the environments that they may be exposed to in, in a contained space so that they can actually create, you know, like uh, lettuce and vegetables and stuff like that that people can uh, live on. And they're testing some of this stuff right now in the space station. So I so can only assume piece. that the... I can only assume that the picture that we were just looking at is eggs of uh, alien Martian people. Not what that was. That was seeds for okay. vegetable plants. I'm sorry to disappoint you, <laughs> but uh, can't can, can, yeah. you're, you're you're not reading between the lines here, man. It's the vegetable people. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, got it. Got it. Uh, vegans. Not that idea. Yeah, yeah. We call them. We call them not vegans. No, they're, they're, no, they're the veganites. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so anyway. so eventually, the, like, kind of the highlight of this whole thing is watching the Falcon Nine it's launch. It's a lot, right? Yeah. So we get up at at you know, I, I it's not so often that I get to say O oh, Dark Thirty, right? Mm. <laughs> I get up at O oh, Dark Thirty. I got up at two thirty so that I could go out and see this four thirty launch, and we're you know, it, it's it's barely daybreak, and we're out on the causeway and we get to witness this. We have tripods. We're all like videoing it. There was a guy that was drawing it. There was a guy there that was drawing the launch. It is so cool. I have to send you a link um, to his pictures on Instagram. And, and, that's and, fantastic. Amber just cracked a big smile. That, that's her thing, man. If you can draw something really awkward and awesome, that's, that's right up her alley. <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. And if you haven't seen a launch, the launch experience, like you as a citizen can just request to get a launch pass and uh, you may or may not get selected. But if if you get access, then you are allowed to go onto the causeway. And that is across this big body of water from where they actually launch these things. And you get to see this thing go off. And this is a night launch. It was an early, early morning launch. So we got to see it pretty much right at daybreak. Mm -hmm. And there are two things that are kind of interesting about that. One is that it's pitch black and then suddenly it is light as day because of all of the light that these engines on these rockets put out. Engines pr is probably not the right word. And then the other thing is the noise. Like this thing takes off and you hear nothing. I, I got a couple of great shots where I'm showing it take off right from the pad. Mm. We heard nothing when that was happen, happening because we're so far away from it. But then what? when it's way up in the sky already, then we then start to hear launch. Voice. Yeah, what, do you know what the distance was? Like how far were you from the launch pad? I don't know. Um, it, you know, we, we might have been able to figure that out from this video if we wanted to. I don't know. But so you're actually playing in the background. You're playing the audio. And, and turn it up because, like, the sound is unbelievable. This far away, the sound is still deafening. Wow. Like, you, hear, you feel it in your body. You feel it in your ears as this thing is taking off. And it's, you know, who knows how far away from you by that point. It's crazy. Yeah, did did they issue you hearing protection or no? They, were your they, they, your your eardrums exposed it's, to this? <laughs> yeah, it, it's not anything like it's probably less bad than what you might experience at a rock concert or something like that. Okay, yeah. 
Um, yeah, so I, I imagine you were at, at quite a distance then because I, I I know what it sounds like for an F-16 to take off, oh. and that is a, just a single engine, like a very small engine compared to what these rockets are. And I, I can't even I can't even imagine the decibel level that, that is put out by I uh, by uh, rockets. I, I got hit with donorism today. With with what? I'm with, sorry. With nonerism. Oh, nonerism. Yeah. Okay. It, it's been a while since I've been outside on the flight line when uh w- while an, a jet would take off because usually I'm in my office and it's loud as hell up there, but it's nowhere yeah. near as loud or concussive as it is or percussive, I guess. Percussive. Percussive. As it is when you're on the flight line in the, in the it's it's an F twenty two. Each engine is louder, bigger, stronger than F sixteen engine, and there's mm-hmm. two of them, and they're both right. going full bore, and it takes forever. And then one, another one comes in right, right behind it. And I was caught outside, and I was just like, this this is why I don't hear when people talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I didn't hear what you said. Could you could you repeat that? I missed that. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, the ear damage on the flight line is real. Mm. It's a real thing. Yeah. Um, yep. uh, so, so overall, you would recommend it, Richard? <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah seriously i mean this this was you know that's where it culminated and then they had given us passes to go and explore the visitor center for the day mm. i was so tired i just <laughs> i couldn't do it i just had to go back to my hotel and sleep but i i have in fact seen the visitor center before and they have i think I don't know if I have this right. I think they have the Atlantis there, mm. if I remember correctly. So you can actually go up up close and and see the Atlantis and and see how big it is compared to like you. So so the, the thing about the stuff. yeah the thing about the space shuttle that blew me away is just how much bigger it is than you think it is by watching it on TV. Because every time you see it on TV, it's either strapped oh, yeah. to a, a massive rocket and it looks tiny. Or is strapped to the right. back of a 747, and right. the 747 yeah. eclipses it, you know. <laughs> but then right. you actually see right. it by itself, and it's like, holy, this is this is big. Yeah, um, yeah. That's whenever it's attached to the 747 is really the the only time that I get any sense of scale mm. when I look at it. And uh, a lot of people just forget how massive a 747 is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, so, um, it, yes, this was an amazing experience. I highly recommend that anyone who is a space fanatic like I am, you know, I'm, I'm one of these people that watches all the launches when I'm awake. If, yeah. if I'm awake, I watch yeah. it. Uh, nine years ago, eight years ago, I don't remember exactly the date. I should. That's embarrassing. <laughs> NASA had a hour like a a minute by minute playback of all of the mission audio from the Apollo landing mm. for 5 days mm. from launch until they were there and and then finally leaving moon oh jeez and wow. so that was on an audio channel on the internet. And I listened like that was on in my house for five days. I followed along with that and, and literally tears in my eyes when they're stepping on the moon as if they were just doing it for the first time. Mm, like this, right. this stuff is just so freaking cool to me. And if you're that kind of person, you love this stuff this much. I highly recommend follow NASA social, look into this program, Look out for the notices that they put out because they put them out fairly regularly and apply. Like, mm. you, and if you don't get in, just keep applying. I did. Yep. And it was amazing. Yeah. I, I literally just now followed them on Twitter. It is indeed at NASA social. Um, Richard says they are on pretty much every social media platform so if this is something that interests you, I, I highly suggest you look them up on uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, whatever your preferred social media is, and give them a follow because this sounds freaking awesome. Yep. 
they were awesome. And, you know, the people who run it, they treated us, like I said, like VIPs. Like they had a team of people that were there that were kind of, you know, shepherding us around and being our tour guides. And they had a retired person from the base that was on board and kind of uh, on our our, our coach that, cause they drove us around. It's a huge space. It's a huge area. And they drive, drove us around on a private, uh, a private coach. And they uh, were telling us all the things that they've been doing. And he was sharing his experience that I can't say enough good stuff about it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Look into it. It's amazing. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm absolutely doing this. Let's um let's transition away from awesome. Because we've had a, we've had enough of that for this show. It's a, yeah. So let's go. Yeah, let's go back to our normal show. Well, no, no, no. It's not even the normal. It's uh, we 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 uh, we we keep telling people that if you if you if you call us and leave us a voicemail, we'll play it on the air as long as it's not you know didn't violate our own code of ethics about you know being a jerk. Um, and we, even, well, even then, we might play an edited version of it. Right, yeah. I mean, anything's possible. But we finally got a voicemail, and we're going to go ahead and play the voicemail now. And uh, I want to see what chat room has to say about this, because I found it very interesting. Hi, Kim. It's Sherry Yusuf with Guardian Angels. Hey, sweetheart, could you call me when you have a minute? I'll talk to you then. Thanks, honey. Bye-bye. Um, I, I, I do want to thank Sherry uh, uh, for, yeah. for sending the voicemail. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Sherry, uh, we really appreciate your input, and we will we will make sure to implement those changes immediately. And we agree, our our audience is the best. It, it's it's nice that you have a guardian angel. Uh, apparently, yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, and uh, uh, Kim, I'm sorry, it just it's not going to happen. It's not going to work out. I mean, <laughs> apparently, you suck at giving phone numbers. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, this this might have been a, a, a an example of a dodge. You know, like when uh, you know you're at a club and somebody wants your number and mm. you you uh, don't want to give your actual number, so right, you write right. one down that's uh, yeah. you know may or may not be a real number. Uh, the, the 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 chat room wants to hear a replay, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, cue this up here. Hi, Kim. It's Sherry Yusuf with Guardian Angels. Hey, sweetheart, could you call me when you have a minute? I'll talk to you then. Thanks, honey. Bye bye. Um, and I don't know who Hoon is either, but apparently Hoon's pretty important. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if you would like to call and leave your own voicemail for us to to laugh about on uh, on the old program, uh, th- that'd be five six seven six nine eight seven six seven two five six seven six nine eight seven six seven two. That is an Austin local number because that's the only city worth saving in Texas, and that's how that works because I made it up. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you want to find out what I've got going on on the internet, I am RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Pretty much everywhere else on the internet, I am either Del Noche or Del Noche 77. Richard, where can people find what you have going on? People can find me on Twitter at Richard Gunther, and that is an aggregation of all my different Twitter voices. Well, most of them, not all, most of them. I am going to pimp out homeboy Mm. and if you don't know what that is one of my side 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 projects is a smart home software product a set of apps that work on different devices and it's called homeboy and it's a series of apps that control instian smart home devices if you don't don't know what i'm talking about don't worry about it. If you do, <laughs> if you use Instion and you're like, dude, I didn't know about Homeboy. I should get Homeboy. You should get Homeboy. Because what Homeboy is, is a really cool, quick and easy way of controlling your Instion devices. It's faster than Instion's own apps. And we're on pretty much every platform. And we just came out with a new release that supports the Instion thermostats. So Check that out if you are interested, and I'm sure they will put the uh, the the link to the blog post that I wrote about that out on their show notes. You're going to do that, right? You're going to put that in the show notes? Absolutely. Yeah, with, without right. a doubt. That will be in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, so I, I was going to say, um, it, you said that if people don't know what you're talking about, they can just ignore this. I say if people don't know what you were talking about, they should listen to your podcast, 
home on. Oh man, you know, I don't even have to promote myself. You're doing it for me. So yeah, my my other side, less to the side, my other side <laughs> project is that I, I host a number of podcasts and one of them is called Home On. And it's a show about DIY smart home products and technology. And if that's something that interests you, we talk about all of this stuff, including Homeboy, but I try not to talk too much about my own stuff. Mm. And that can be found at the Digital Media Zone, the blog that I edit and help maintain. That's at thedigitalmediazone.com or just go to your podcast player and search for either my name or Home On. You're going to find it. Thank you, Kent. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, excellent. It's a great show. I encourage everybody to check it out. Amos, what about you, dude? At Ethan Kane on Twitter. That's pretty much all that matters right now. I am going to be ramping up my Instagram game because apparently that's the thing you're supposed to do uh, when, when you when you when you like taking pictures of stuff. So, expect like two that. years ago. Well, so here's the thing. I've been holding on this this crappy uh, platform called Facebook. And I am about 98% of the way to just getting rid of Facebook. Um, if I, if I get, if I could stay in Facebook groups and get rid of the page that when I open it up, it shows everybody else's feed. If I could get rid of that and just see like birthday reminders and, and the groups that I'm part of, I would do, I would do that in a heartbeat. Like if there's a way to do that, let me know. Cause I'm ready to just kick Facebook out of my life. Um, Speaking of Facebook, I am going to very soon, probably within the next five episodes, have part three of my ongoing Facebook exper experiment. Good. Uh, so look forward to Good. that. Good. He said probably in the next five episodes. <laughs> yeah, so more than likely it'll be like eight or nine episodes. Now, but, uh... <laughs> um, and you can follow the show uh, on Twitter. That's a good place to follow the show because we post stuff there at Ritual Misery. You can call uh, or you can find all of uh, 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 Kent. I can't read. <laughs> was, you can find all of this great stuff uh, about the show and ways to support wait, wait, us wait, over wait, at we, Ritual we, Misery. We forgot com. something. We forgot something. Uh, Amber, is there anywhere that you would like to share that you are? No. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay. Kent, uh, as you were. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. If you want to leave some comments about our episodes, head over to ritualmisery.reddit.com. Leave us some feedback there. Uh, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.com slash ritualmisery. We do want to say thank you to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. For me, for Amos, and for Richard... This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. You forgot Amber. Bye! And Amber. <laughs> and for Amber. <laughs> Don't forget Sherry. <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R I T U A L M I C L Y. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Flavor Toothpaste, for that. <laughs> um, a special shout out to Kim and Sherry and the Guardian Angels. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs>